Okay, let's review where we are so far as far as making this jet band is concerned. We res the prim, a cylinder on the stage, and then we attached a code to it. So we went to content and new script. We renamed this script to jetpack or jet band. Double clicked on it, and that's the default code that comes up. And we replace that with Jeff Heaton's code. So control V to do that. And there's the code, and we saved it, and it compiled, and we're ready to go. And so what we want to do now is actually shape this into an attractive jet band that will fit around my right arm. And I'm actually use four commands to do that with. I use control shift click to resize, control click to rotate, alt click to zoom, and control alt click to pan. So let's do that right now. Let's uh, bring this object a little closer to ourselves so we can work on it a little bit. There we go. Let's go ahead and control shift to resize. I'll grab this blue control handle and make it smaller. I want to put a hole in it, so let's go to uh, object and just go hollow. I'll cut a hole in it. There you go. And then I'm going to control shift again to grab that uh, gray handle to shrink the whole thing. I'm right, looking pretty good here. And let's go ahead and attach it to my arm and work with it on my arm. So we'll go more, attach, right arm, and upper arm. And it's not quite where we want it to be, so we're going to hit our Alt key now and zoom in on it. There we go. A little bit large, so we can actually resize it here. So let's Control Shift and resize. There we go. And let's kind of rotate. Let's rotate in the position. So let's hit Control and rotate. There we go. Making making good progress here. And let's shift. Uh, getting pretty good. Let's uh, Control Alt to pan around. There we go. And let's Control. Let's Alt just to kind of zoom in where we want to be. Good. That looks pretty good. And move that over a little bit. And our armband's looking fairly well. Let's go ahead and put some color on it. So I'm actually going to go to uh, my edit panel and click on textures. Double click on that. Let's turn that blank. And uh, let's select that. And let's go to color and select black. Select. And I'm going to go to shininess and make it really shiny. There you go. And apply. So we're in good shape there. And now we have our armband. Great. Let's see if it works. I'm going to hit the Home key. And you automatically, you see, you get this altitude reading. So let's go up. And we see my altitude is changing. And I'm moving higher and higher into the sky. Very good. But I have a problem here with this. And my problem is, is when I go back to the ground, is that altitude number is still there. And that really bugs me. I don't want it there all the time. But I would like it when I get to a certain height, say 70 meters, let it appear. And when I come down, let it disappear. So let's go in now and modify the code so that will happen. OK, here's the problem. When I walk around here, this altitude number sticks with me. I don't want it here anymore. I want it to disappear when I'm at a certain level, for example, 70 meters. So let's right click on the band and let's modify the code. Go to Edit. And I'm going to go to Content and go to Jet Band. Click on that and up comes the script. And I need to look for an altitude. Something that says altitude, something that says Z. So I'm just looking through the code. Once again, not becoming a coder, just learning to modify code at first. And there I see something that says L get position. Altitude plus string position Z. Hey, that's it. And I can see it's on a timer. So as my position changes, this timer fires and it's adjusted according to this altitude. But what happens is it happens all the time when the jetpack's attached to my arm. I want it only to happen when I'm above 70 meters. So I'm going to type in some code here. Let's use the if statement. If pos.z is greater than or equal to 70. There we go. Let's go ahead and close that. All right, and we're going to put that in curly brackets. Then I want this statement to occur. Let's open that up a little bit. But if it's not greater than 70 meters, there's an else. Basically, I'm going to just take this statement here and just modify it a little bit. 
I'm going to use Control C to copy and Control V to paste. And if it doesn't, hey, let's nothing happen. There you go. I'm just going to leave the quotes in there and take that away. And then so if I'm not above 70, basically the uh, set text will be set to blank. Let's go ahead and save that code. And it compiles successfully. Hoo -hoo, that's great. And now let's take a look and see if it worked. So now that I have the band scripted, let's go ahead and take it back into my inventory, detach it. I'm going to my inventory, I'm going to give it a name. Let's go ahead and uh, go to recent items and objects. And let's rename this Jet Band. And go ahead and uh, that's good. And let's go ahead and reattach that back to my arm. There we go. Right click on the object and go more. Attach, right arm, upper arm. And there's my band attached to my arm. And let's test it and see if it works. Off we go. And we see indeed my altitude number has now disappeared. And when I'm above 70, you can see it. And when I go down, let's page down. It's gone. Hey, hey, isn't that great? Let's go all the way up in the sky and see if there's anything up here hiding. I think earlier we saw something. Let's see what that was. I'm above 200 like I want to be. Let's look around, see if there's anything up here. Oh, ho, there's some cubes up here. <laughs> Let's right click on this cube and go get in. And whoa, look at that. Up above me, I didn't even know that was there. There is a hologram. Ooh, fantastic. Well, that's another reason to uh, zip above 200 meters, and you can do that with this jet band. Just a review real quick. I just made a small code modification. This is the way you want to start off when you're just programming. Let's use the if position greater than 70, and if not, set it to blank. Hey, guess what? Buy Jess books. Uh, they'll give you a real leg up when it comes to programming in Second Life. And don't worry about all the details. Just get the structure and start modifying code. And from then on, you'll eventually find out that in just a short period of time, you'll be a great coder.